States. But ironically, uh, if not surprisingly, it is precisely the United States which, which claims that it is so, the solution to the quest uh, for peace. The reason for this claim is the so-called doctrine of democratic peace, which goes back to the days of Woodrow Wilson and World War I, and has been revived in recent years by George Bush and his neoconservative advisors. Now, this theory of democratic peace claims the following. First, democracies do not go to war against each other. Second, hence, in order to create lasting peace, the entire world must be made democratic. And, as a largely unstated uh, corollary, three, today, many states are not democratic and resist internal democratic reform. And fourth, hence, war must be waged on those states in order to convert them to democracy and thus create lasting peace. Now, I do not have the patience for a full critique of the theory, um, but I shall provide a brief critique, at least of the theory's premise, and of its final c conclusion. First thing, do democracies not go to war against each other? Now, since almost no democracies existed before the 20th century, uh, the answer must obviously be found within the last hundred years or so. And in fact, the bulk of the evidence that is offered in favor of the thesis is that the countries of Western Europe have not gone to war against each other uh, in the post-World War II era. Likewise, in the Pacific region, Japan and South Korea have not warred against each other. Now, does this evidence prove the case? Um, now, the democratic peace theorists obviously think so. Um, as they see it, there are plenty of cases on which they can build their case. Germany did not war against France, Italy, and England. France did not war against Spain, Italy, and Belgium. And moreover, there are permutations involved also. Germany did not attack France, and France did not attack Germany. Um, thus, we have seemingly dozens of confirmations, and not a single counterexample for more than 60 years, but do we really have that? And the answer is, of course, no. Uh, what we actually have is no more than one single case. Um, with the end of World War II, all of Western Europe and Japan and Korea in the Pacific region became part of the United States Empire, as is indicated by the presence of United States troops practically everywhere in these countries. Now, what the post-World War II period of peace then proves is not that democracies do not go to war against each other, but that an imperialist power such as the United States did not let its various colonial parts go to war against each other. You also did not see, by the way, any wars breaking out between all those countries that were dominated by the Soviet Union as long as the Soviet Empire existed, from which we also do not draw the conclusion that communist dictatorships under Russian control do not go to war against each other, so because of that we have to introduce something like this.